Welcome to Thriving Travis Men. My name is Corey, your host, and I'm excited to be making this episode. Today, I'm going to be talking about leveraging skill of seduction so that you can maximize this, the frequency of sex within a relationship. And this is a very interesting topic because when you think about seduction, and when I talk about seduction, generally, most people think it's just that one thing that they do before they actually have sex. Just whether it's uh, a physical thing or it's maybe innuendos that you can share uh, or it's something that where you, it's sacred to something within your relationship where it's supposed to be hidden and it's supposed to be something that is obscure. And there's all these different understandings of what seduction is. And generally, most people think they're okay with seduction because they've had multiple partners and they've had sex several times or at least a few hundred times uh, if you're probably my age. And because you've done that, you actually assume that you're good at it. Um, it's just like, again, I always give the example of that. I've played football. I can kick your ball. I can control it to a certain extent. And I can kick it to a direction. Does not make me a footballer. Just makes me proficient at the game. I can play within a team and really contribute. The difference is there's some people who have dedicated their life to that game. There's people that have dedicated their skill to developing the skill to the point where they get even get paid for it. And my point being that there is levels to seduction it's quite broad it's something that is that as you learn how to make better use of seduction and understand it and actually put yourself into a place where again one of the fundamentals of it actually getting to get better with it is actually being that resilient that you are trying different things and some of those things you're going to be rejected on and it's that resiliency of knowing that that thing that thing didn't work out and it's got nothing to do with you per se in terms of the way you look or the money that you make. That you're not being rejected because of, because of that. You're just being rejected because of the presentation that you've presented in terms of sex. So as you get better at presenting sex within your relationship in a way that is mutually beneficial, mutually attractive, mutually exciting... That's what makes the difference. And it's the skill to be able to do that frequently. Like I said, there's uh, within the seduction, there's about five different types of movements or things that you can do in order to make it work. I mean, one of them is playful. One of them is uh, actually being indifferent. There's, there's so many other things that you can implement in order to maximize the amount of frequency that you can have sex. I personally use two most of the times, uh, being a lot playful and the actual being indifferent towards sex. I use that in, as a way of really getting us both engaged within the relationship from a sexual standpoint. Like I said, it's the skills, there's a level to this and this is where we're trying to get you guys to try and start raising your game, start raising your skill. Because when you raise your skill, I can guarantee you sex becomes like a byproduct of you being happy within your relationship. It's like consistent. It's just a byproduct. Um, over the last few weeks, we were, I was beginning to launch the Reignited Men, and I'm just giving an example. And I've been working on the course material, the structure of what we're going to be doing. In fact, before that, I was working on the sales process. And there's other things that were going on in life. And even though we were uh, having moments, intimate moments in terms of uh, just being together and then sharing moments and speaking together and having fun, we just could not have sex in terms of the actual intercourse. So we, we just didn't have time. We just we just swamped. But she was swamped as well. And then she went on a period. So there were just so many things that were obstructing us from actually doing it. She didn't um, internalize anything and then become upset with, with it. I didn't internalize or become upset with it. We just rolled with it and we maintained being playful. We maintained the the indifference and me chasing and her chasing. We maintain that. And that was part, is an important integral part of seduction. 
and it got to the point where she was like, this week we have to do it. <laughs> and it was nice to hear to, for her to say, this week we have to do it. Because again, she she's making claim, she's making claim. And it was, okay, I'll put it this way. Two years ago, she wouldn't have done that. She would have, it would have just gone for months, just nothing happening. But the fact that she actually feels like she needs to claim and say, this is what I want, and she's got that freedom to do so, is because we're consistently keeping that seduction going. It's a, it's an iterative process that for whenever we find a stumbling block in, th in terms of our relationship and interacting sexually, because we could, um, we're maintaining this level of seduction from my end in terms of skill, and her skill is also now growing and we're both adding to this it becomes this environment where we um it's mutually beneficial and in terms of um sex we're always 80 percent ready for sex so the the step up into 100 percent let's go for it is a shorter than starting from 10 percent i don't know if that makes sense but hopefully that makes sense so i think most people they operate off 10 percent and a lot of it is because they are really dependent on innuendos. So whenever she speaks, they'll put out an innuendo. Uh, whenever she uh, she walks by, they'll try to slap their bun. Or if she's naked, they say something that is, you know, and a lot of it is just approval seeking. So it's more you taking from the interaction than it is giving to towards the interaction. And I hope that makes sense. So... Okay, I'll just take this and then whoever went it. So most people, when they uh, it comes to a, a sexual interaction, because they are, they've been rejected before, they place so much significance in the thing that they're going to do. So whether it's a touch or a hug or a kiss, there's so much significance to it, it puts pressure on her and therefore she ne does not open up in order to be feel arousal. Therefore, this is the reason why when you can back off, and not do anything where it's, you're adding pressure, it actually gives you the opportunity to actually start opening up, uh, opening her up, and she opens up, especially for the actual seduction itself. So, for example, if you become playful, if you slap her, and it's not with any significance, it gives you the opportunity to do the same to you, and then becomes exciting for both of you, and therefore you actually start building on this, and then therefore... In the end, you both excited, you're having fun, and the byproduct ends up being sex. I said quite a lot there. I didn't keep track of, of what I was saying. So hopefully that makes sense and sort of ties it all in the bow. So I want to release it and listen to it. Hopefully that all makes sense. If that, that doesn't make sense for you guys, um, and we are, we've already structured a similar lesson, but in more detail within the Facebook group. Go and join the Facebook group. If not... Uh, you can get details for joining the Reignited Men, which is our new program, which is really, really takes you deep down in this and really starts helping you to build the skill of seduction. So thank you very much for listening. I'll be speaking to you guys soon. Take care.